Good morning everyone and welcome to our morning prayer on Tuesday the 25th of May 2021. If it's your birthday today I do wish you a happy birthday and I hope you enjoy your day. Our readings today are taken from Psalm 145 verses 9 to 21 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 to 27. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading is Psalm 145, verses 9 to 21. Psalm 145, verses 9 to 21. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall, and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, 
but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall, will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name for ever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Psalms 145 to 150 are a group of psalms in praise of God, probably intended for public worship. They are used by Jews today in daily prayer. Each psalm in this section begins and ends with an Alleluia, O oh, praise the Lord. Praise is poured out for his character. He is loving, forgiving, good and faithful, just and kind, satisfying the need of his creation. This is a psalm written by David and tells that a time will come when all people will join together in recognising and worshipping God because God is full of love. He satisfied all who trust in him. The Lord is good to all. David expressed the idea sometimes called common grace, that God spread some of his goodness to all humanity. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, Jesus said, He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. The Lord is good to everyone, not only Israel. Have you seen, just as David saw, the beautiful care of God pressed upon all that he did? Look around you. All of creation and the wise plans of God show his greatness and goodness. Creation itself praises God as God's people. We should be praising and blessing the Lord. We too need to speak of the glory of his kingdom. There are many things we talk about, but how often do we speak to others of the glory of God's kingdom and of his great power? It is our responsibility as God's people to tell the wider world the greatness of what God has done, so that all people may know of your mighty act. If we don't do it, no one else will carry this message on. Remember how short the memory of the Israelites was throughout their history? How easy it was for them to forget all he had done for them? Let us pray that we don't ever forget to tell others about the greatness of God. Verse 14 says, The Lord upholds all who fall. Sometimes our burdens seem more than we can bear and we wonder how we can go on. God's compassion is especially evident towards those who fall and fail. He does not despise or reject them. There is a sense in which he specially draws near them to hold them up. God's care for creation extends beyond his provision for men and women. As Jesus would later say, God also cares for the birds and the grass of the field. As you can read about in Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 to 30. God does this with a wonderfully open hand and heart to his creation. Verse 17 says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. He hears our cries and rescues us. If you are bending under a burden and feel that you are about to fall, turn to God for help. He is ready to lift you up and bear your burden. He remains near to those who call on him because he is righteous and gracious in all his dealings. 
commentator Boyce writes, the last verse of Psalm 145 is the last word we have from David in the Bible. It is his last will and testament. If he had said nothing else in his long life, these words would be a fine legacy for future generations. In it, he praises God and invites others to praise God also. We too should be praising God and again and again, just as David did. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that you are our God, who is worthy of our continuous praise and worship. Fill our hearts each day with songs of thanksgiving and praise for who you are and what you have done for all who have trusted you for salvation. May we never forget your goodness and grace to all your children and keep our hearts in a state of ready, worshipful praise for you alone are worthy of honour and highly to be praised. Open the eyes of our understanding more and more, so that in every circumstance of life we can sing, Great is the Lord, and most worthy to be praised. His greatness no one can fathom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next reading is taken from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. The first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. Unity and diversity in the body. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but in all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink, so that so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not be, be for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body was an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together giving greater honour to the parts that, it, that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers. Every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles and gifts of healing and guidance and of different kinds of tongues.
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 to 31 continues Paul's teaching on the spiritual gifts as they cooperate to empower God's will for the church. The Christian church is like a human body. This is one individual organism made up of many different parts that serve a wide variety of functions. All those functions matter. Nobody should decide they don't like their gift or their role in the church and try to quit. The body needs each member to do its part in order to work properly. We must respect and value each other for the vital roles we serve in the church. Paul is quite correct in saying that each part of the human body has a specific function that is necessary to the body as a whole. Even though they are different, each part must work together. And that is the same for all the gifts we have in the church. We must not become too proud of our own abilities or think that we have nothing to give the body of believers. Every cell in the human body is linked by a common root, a common DNA code. Yet the parts of our body, the members of the church, may look different and are treated differently, work differently and accomplish different purposes. Even so, there is great diversity in the body of Jesus Christ both in appearance and function, yet each member has a common root and a common goal. We are asked to use our different gifts together to spread the good news of salvation. Paul tells us that it doesn't matter if we are Jews, Gentiles, slave or free, because we are all in one body. Faith in Christ brings unity. It is the one thing all believers have in common. On this essential truth, the church finds unity. All believers are baptised by one Holy Spirit into one body of believers, the church. Paul argued for diversity of gifts and acceptance of the full range of gifts. Not only is this diversity in the body of Jesus Christ acceptable, it is essential. The body cannot work properly if all our hands or if all our eyes. The body must have different parts and gifts or it would not work together effectively as a body. No one should feel superior about his or her gift. Instead, we should all use our gifts to willingly serve. Often, we consider a part of our body unnecessary or of low importance until it is hurt. Then we realise how important it is. The hand or the eye may seem to be more important and may have more glamour in its position, but it's not more necessary or important than other parts of the body. Paul brings up the word division here to show that a little, how little sense it makes for a body to be divided. A human body is made up of diverse parts that all serve different functions. A divided human body ceases to function properly. If all the parts are not working together towards the same ends, the body doesn't work as it was intended, if at all. One way to avoid that, Paul writes here, is for each part of the body to honour the other parts of the body. Those with visible upfront gifts and roles must honour those who serve the body behind the scenes. The teachers must honour the helpers. The exhorters must honour the encouragers and those behind the scenes 
must honour and support those who serve on the front lines. All believers must care for and uplift one another. Then there will be no division. We cannot have a solitary relationship with God. All believers are in the world together. Our strength comes in being together, being part of the body that is the Christian church. We need to be involved with others and serve God together. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the vine, we are the branches. Help us to grow toward your light. Feed, nurture and direct us for the sake of your church, which is rooted in divine love and grace. Cut away our misguided attitudes and make us truly sorry for the blight and shame of Christian disunity. Gentle Lord, direct us again to your cross, where we may bury our pride. Drench us with the dew of heaven, that we may bring forth new fruit and worship you as one. Amen. Heavenly Father and Lord of life, we pray for the gift of courage to face up to and cope with evil, with illness. We pray for it for ourselves and for those who we now name before you in the quietness of our hearts. We pray also for those mentioned in the cat. Dear Lord, lift them high on eagles' wings. Fill their minds with your truth and cover their hearts with hope. Protect them always. May they feel safe and secure beside you. Walk with them through each moment. Come and be their strength when they feel weak. Be their counsel when they need comfort. Help them to rest, to lie down when they need to and allow others to take the strain. We pray that throughout this hard time, they may know you, our love for them and your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful Father, you show your love to all creation. We come before you asking for quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging parts of our world. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the virus in various parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead and consolation to the bereaved families. We pray that the vaccines will be generously supplied to those in most need. We pray for the relevant governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of all the people in their country. Look upon us in your mercy and forgive us for our failings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love, that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship and their lives encircled by your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, thank you that sin and death have been conquered by Christ and that your power is everlasting. He paid the price to offer us the gift of eternal life. Help us never to forget or take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. 
Help us not to hide this great truth or to keep it to ourselves out of fear of judgment. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted by other things, for not fully recognising what you freely give, what you have done for us. May we be found faithful to go into all the world, our communities, the nation, the whole world. May we share this light of hope that so burns within our hearts. Open doors that no one can shut, Lord. Protect your people as we carry the truth of Jesus into all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I do hope you'll be able to join me again tomorrow. Our readings tomorrow are Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 14 and John chapter 20 verses 19 to 23. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.